Hey everyone, it's Green Eyed Guide. Picture the stereotypical cup of tea. Now, picture the stereotypical energy drink. Could these images be any different? In today's episode, I want to talk about what happens when you add energy drink ingredients to tea. When is tea more than just tea? When is tea an energy drink? Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Caffeine at Midnight podcast, a short, no BS, science-based podcast for people who drink caffeine and work beyond the nine to five. I'm your host, Danielle Robertson-Rath, also known as Green Eyed Guide. I research caffeine, energy drinks, and fatigue in the workplace. I'm the author of Are You a Monster or a Rockstar? A Guide to Energy Drinks and How to Get Shit Done When You Feel Like Shit. Oh, by the way, uh, I kind of like the S word. Sorry. You can learn more about me, what I do, my books, my educational background, all that good stuff at greeneyedguide.com. For now, grab your favorite caffeinated beverage and your favorite note-taking app and let's do this. Apologies in advance if you heard the sounds of my bulldog or my baby in the background. I don't have a lot of time or a lot of fancy podcast equipment. What I do have is a lot of passion, and the Anchor app allows me to share that passion with you, dear listeners. If you are considering your own podcast, I highly recommend using Anchor. It's completely free. You can record, edit, and publish right from your phone, and Anchor distributes to Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, and all the other podcasts. You can download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Before we get started, a few super quick announcements. Okay, first of all, if you know me, you know I like doing things in threes, so it kind of drives me crazy that there are four announcements, but here we go. The first one is, I was on the podcast, What If Discussed, and we talked about what if you were addicted to energy drinks. I highly recommend that episode. It was a lot of fun. There's a lot of good information there. Whether you drink energy drinks or caffeine in any other form, please go check that out. Again, the podcast is called What If Discussed, and the title of the episode that I was on is called What If You Were Addicted to Energy Drinks. Announcement number two, I was also on Dr. Joe's Health and Sanity Call. On that podcast, we talked about tips to find your perfect amount of caffeine so that you have the benefits without the side effects. Announcement number three, should energy drinks be banned? This is the topic for my guest lecture this week at Cal State Long Beach. This is the third year I've done this lecture for this particular class, and it's always a thrill. In this session, we look at news articles about the dangers of energy drinks, then we look at published peer-reviewed scientific research, which either supports, refutes, or clarifies the statements from the news articles. It's a really fun exercise. It's always very interactive because the answers aren't black and white. And it's a great exercise on critical thinking, food science, scientific reading, and of course, caffeine safety. And it's perfect for doing it virtually because there are so many hands-on activities. So that's announcement number three. Announcement number four is I am also this week doing a virtual training for a fire district here in Wisconsin. This is a training I'm preparing for them to watch on demand. So because they are firefighters, they don't have time to sit through a virtual session. So I'm preparing a training that they can watch at their leisure, both in video and audio only, so they can listen to it on the road, even if they can't watch the training. But in that session, in that training I'm preparing for them, we'll be talking about how to avoid the top 10 mistakes everyone makes with caffeine and energy drinks, how to reduce burnout and sleep inertia, how to feel more energized with less caffeine, and for the management, for the leaders of those teams, how to use the five pillars of fatigue to improve the workplace. Okay, there you have it. That's my four big announcements. It's a very big week. It's a very big month, a very busy month for me. And hey, if any of those things sound interesting to you and you'd like me to talk to your group or your team, 
send me a message on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever you choose to find me. Or you can email me at info at greeneyedguide.com. Okay, announcements over. Let's get to the real juice of this episode. Okay, let's dive right in. So again, the questions we're answering in this episode, when is tea more than just tea? When is tea an energy drink? And to start, we have to think about what is an energy drink. Now, this is complicated because there is no legal definition for the term, quote unquote, energy drink. Many people think that all energy drinks look and taste like Red Bull. However, the term, quote unquote, energy drink is a lot more broad than you'd expect. In fact, the Caffeine Informer website that I love so much states an energy drink is any drink that meets the following criteria. One, it has more than one ingredient known to increase energy. Two, it has a clear and obvious intent to increase energy. That's it. That's the two criteria. Yeah, you can have a product that has green tea and B vitamins, and that is technically an energy drink in terms of the definition that the beverage industry uses. Again, there is no legal definition per the FDA. So this, these are the guidelines we have. More than one ingredient known to increase energy and a clear and obvious intent to increase energy. That second one means that they have the word energy or they have some kind of marketing on their label that lets you know its purpose in life is not to hydrate you, it's not a soda, it is supposed to be an energetic product. In short, you should think of energy drinks like cereal. There's the healthy bran on one end of the spectrum and the chocolatey sugar O's on the other. Energy drinks fall on a spectrum too. On one end, there are drinks with high caffeine and high sugar content. Then on the other end, there are drinks that resemble tea. Ergo, our question today, when is tea more than tea? When is it an energy drink? Pure green tea is not an energy drink. Nowhere on a box of green tea will you find any labeling or any marketing suggesting that this thing is going to give you energy. In fact, the stereotype associated with drinking tea is of calmness, of serenity and focus, not energy. So pure green tea is not an energy drink. But green tea plus other energy boosting ingredients meet that energy drink definition we just talked about. For example, there's a drink called Marquis, M-A-R-Q-U-I-S. This is a drink with herba mate, green coffee, and green tea. So this technically counts as an energy drink. It has more than one thing known to increase energy. Furthermore, it meets that second criteria because if you look at the can or if you look at their website, it makes it clear that their goal is to give you energy. For example, let me read this from their website. What makes us different? Our unique blend of herba mate, green coffee, and green tea provides a balanced lift, which is a synonym for energy, that helps you win each day without the ups and downs of most caffeinated drinks. So say goodbye to crashing and hello to the perfect morning pickup, pre-workout boost, or elevated cocktail mixer. There you have it. It's very clear from their marketing, this product is supposed to be an energy drink. And that's kind of my second point. Not all energy drinks are bad. That's a whole nother podcast. So let's stop here and recap. You can consider green tea an energy drink when, one, the caffeine content is higher than a standard cup of tea. For example, the cup, a standard cup of tea has about 45 milligrams of caffeine. A can of Marquis has 100 milligrams of organic caffeine. Criteria number two, you can consider green tea an energy drink when there's more than just tea in every serving. So again, looking at the Marquis drink as an example, it has green tea plus green coffee plus herba mate. So it meets that energy drink criteria. And criteria number three, you can consider green tea an energy drink when 
Marketing language makes it clear the goal is to give you some sort of mental boost. And again, if you look at Marquis' website, or if you look at the language on different products, on different cans, you can tell if their goal is to give you energy, if they're trying to be a healthier energy drink or an energy drink alternative. So there you have it. I hope that helps. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with just one person. Word of mouth works great. If you share the podcast link or a screenshot of this podcast on social media, please tag me at Green Eyed Guide so I can give you some love in return. You can also leave a review. No, not on Apple. I'm team Android, so I can't see those anyways. Go to Google Maps, type Green Eyed Guide, and you'll be able to leave a review for me there. You can also explore my picture, see a link to my website, all that good stuff. Thanks again for listening. I hope you have a powerful and productive day. Take care. Thank you.